Hello everyone and welcome to this mini lecture. The next 15 minutes we, Bart, Ruud and Noor will discuss the paper by Wang and Griskovicius about conspicuous consumption and how women's luxury products serve as signals to other women. First, let us look at the title a little closer. What is conspicuous consumption and how are luxury products defined? Sit back and relax while we explain the main thoughts and concepts of this interesting research paper. Conspicuous consumption is the tendency to purchase and exhibit expensive goods like this Louis Vuitton purse or these Swarovski earrings. It is the purchase of goods or services for the specific purpose of displaying one's wealth. In other words, we buy a Louis Vuitton bag to show others the wealth we possess. Conspicuous consumption and luxury products go hand in hand. The definition of luxury products is the following. Relatively expensive products that provide increased prestige without providing additional utilitarian value. Excuse me, what is utilitarian value exactly? Utilitarian value is the value that you, a consumer, receive based on a task-related and rational consumption behavior. For example, you want to buy a bag that fits your laptop. The provided utilitarian value of this purchased bag is that it fits your laptop and that it is comfortable to carry and easy to use. If your bag is from the Gucci brand, you pay a lot of extra money, but the only value added is the brand, and that value is not utilitarian. Anyways, coming back to the story. A lot of research on luxury products has already taken place and the following findings were provided. Luxury products can function to express one's identity, signal one's status, and boost one's self-esteem. However, the research we read by Wang and Gerskovicius proposed another use of luxury products. According to them, luxury products play an important role in male-female relationships. Former findings showed that males use luxury products to attract romantic partners. Sounds familiar to Bert? Yes, totally. When I was single, my entire mating strategy was based on wearing Gucci clothes and having Gucci sunglasses. The research explained how products serve as a sexual signaling system. I guess people are animals after all. Exactly. Alright, enough about men. Can we go to the females now? Of course. The role of luxury products for females remains unclear to this day. A study done by Stockberger, Sauer and Zeichmann suggests that women have a more positive attitude and a higher purchase intention of luxury goods compared to men. However, the reason for this phenomenon is not found in their research. The authors of our article suggest that females use the products to deter same-sex rivals who pose a threat to their relationship. No wonder it is still very confusing for men to understand this form of conspicuous consumption. I agree. The authors investigated this idea in five experiments, each with their own method and findings. We will discuss each study, what method was used, and what was found. In the first study, the authors investigated whether women perceive other women with luxurious possessions as having a more devoted man as their partner. 69 female participants read the description of another woman on a date who was wearing either designer clothes or non-designer clothes. Afterwards, the women were asked if they thought the partner, one, was committed to the woman and two, loved the woman. Results showed support for the statement that women associate having luxurious possessions with a more devoted partner. The second study focused on finding out if a maid guarding motive increased women's desire for conspicuous consumption. Hey Bart, what's the maid guarding motive exactly? Good that you ask. In former research, there was evidence that to be in a successful relationship, partners have to solve at least two central challenges. The first one being attracting a mate. To do this, people are more attentive to attractive members of the opposite sex. After obtaining a mate, the second challenge is to retain that mate. This challenge 
leads to people being more attentive to attractive members of the same sex, who could be a threat to their relationship. A central component of this retaining your mate challenge is mate guarding. It speaks for itself really. Mate guarding is managing the threat of romantic competitors. Back to the question. Does mate guarding increase women's desire for conspicuous consumption? The study involved measuring four different types of negative feelings that arise under four different condition, conditions. Participants were assigned to a condition. They had to read a certain description and their feelings were measured. The measurements were done by asking the participants after they experienced one of the four conditions to outline a brand logo on one of the chosen products. A larger logo indicated a higher desire for conspicuous consumption. As you can all see in this table, findings suggested that participants who were assigned under the mate guarding condition scored significantly higher on all four of the negative feelings that were measured. Additionally, they showed a higher desire for conspicuous consumerism. Okay. So, when women feel threatened by other women regarding their partner, they will desire conspicuous consumption more? Exactly. You got the point. However, study 3 provides an important footnote. 115 female participants were divided into three conditions, in which they each had to read a different script. The maid guarding condition, the female control condition, and the self-esteem threat control condition. After reading the scripts, the participants had to indicate how much they would spend on luxury products that they can show off in public versus luxury products that are less publicly visible. Results show that the females in the maid guarding condition, who read about a woman trying to kiss their partner, wanted to spend more on publicly visible luxury products than on private luxury products. Considering this finding, we can alter our previous statement. The maid guarding condition does not simply increase the desire for every conspicuous consumption product, but only for products that are publicly visible. So, does this mean that when a woman feels threatened by another woman, she will desire to have something conspicuous that everyone can see? Instead of having a big flat screen, she will probably long for something like a car, jewelry or shoes? Indeed. By adding the female control condition and the self-esteem threat condition, the authors also made sure that the effect they found was not driven by a threat to one's self-esteem, nor by the mere presence of another woman. Let's go on to study number four. Are you still paying attention? We are. Good. Let's hope everyone is, because here is where it gets really interesting. Remember we just talked about women wanting conspicuous luxury products that are publicly visible? Keep that in mind because study 4 elaborates on that idea. Would a maid guarding motive lead women to seek conspicuous luxury products when the products can be seen by other women who pose a threat to their relationship? To examine this, 75 female students were assigned to three different conditions to find out whether a female audience, one, led to a higher desire for conspicuous products, and two, made the participants want to spend more to win a $200 shopping spree. The conditions were applied to the same way as was done in study three. Afterwards, the two dependent variables were measured and showed us the following. When women are motivated to guard their mate, the desire for conspicuous goods was higher as expected. Next to that result, it also led to more willingness on spending money on a chance to win a $200 shopping spree. So, this supports the proposed idea that women use conspicuous goods to frighten off other women instead of attracting males? Yes, very good. Last but not least, study 5. This study kept its focus on luxurious products, but now with an additional factor being, did the male partner buy the products for the woman? And does this mean he is more devoted to their relationship? The following hypothesis was described. A woman with luxurious possessions should be perceived by other women as having a more devoted partner, unless those other women are explicitly informed that the male partner has not contributed any resources to her luxury possessions. In order to test this hypothesis, 
female participants were again assigned to four conditions, now being luxury product, non-luxury product, man paid, and woman paid. After being assigned to a condition, the women were asked to rate the following three questions on a seven-point scale. How much do you think the man loves the woman? How much do you think the man cares for the woman? And how much do you think the man and woman love each other? Looking at the results, the majority of the women rated a man's devotion to a woman much higher when the man himself paid for the luxury products. There was a small to no difference detected when rating non-luxury products. Overall, study 5 showed more insight on women's tendency to assume that the partner did not only pay for the luxury products, but also that a man is more devoted when buying luxurious goods for his female partner. So, when I wear my Gucci sneakers to the bar, all the other girls assume that my boyfriend bought them for me? Yes, and they also believe that he is therefore very much devoted to your relationship. Didn't study 5 look at one more thing? Yes, you are on top of your game. Another potential mediator that study 5 looked at had to do with the mating strategy of the female seducer trying to pursue a taken man. The authors prompted two types of women, the ones following a long-term mating strategy and are interested in finding one committed partner, and the ones following a short-term mating strategy, who seek many sexual partners. This mating strategy turned out to be a mediator. The women following a long-term strategy are generally uninterested in pursuing a taken man. The ones following a short-term strategy, on the other hand, are significantly less likely to pursue a man whose partner is wearing conspicuous goods, especially when he paid for them. So, the big question is, is getting a Louis Vuitton purse a strategic move in your relationship? Yes, but only if your boyfriend bought it for you. So, to summarize, if there are any men in the classroom if you want to keep your current or potential girlfriend happy, buy her a gift card to a luxury store and she'll probably have no idea what kind of brand, model, style or size she wants. To the women we can say this. According to evolution theory, we might all long for conspicuous goods from our partners. But never forget, you are worth loving even if you don't have Gucci sneakers. We hope that we have enriched your understanding of conspicuous consumption and the role it can play in romantic relationships. The previous findings are relevant to understand consumer behavior since they give us an insight into the intention of both men and women when buying or desiring luxurious goods. The findings are both informative for us, the consumers, and for companies in order to know how they should react and reach out to both men and women on the market. Of course, the study also has its limitations. The authors did not examine how women behave when their actual relationship is threatened, nor what the desire of luxury products for a single woman is. The biggest limitation, however, is that the study relied on women from the United States only, which makes generalizing the results very difficult. Also, it is hard to reconstruct real-life situations about this topic. Feelings were now measured after reading scripts and looking at pictures. If anyone is interested in this subject, the limitations mentioned could be a good point of departure for future research. Now, if anyone has a question, please be sure to ask us. We'd be more than happy to help. That said, we thank you for your attention and wish you an amazing day. Welcome everyone. Today we will discuss the article Conspicuous Consumption as Sexual Signaling. Purchasing especially expensive goods and services has been labeled conspicuous consumption, defined as attaining and exhibiting costly items to impress upon others that one possesses wealth or status. Therefore, it's closely related to consumer behavior and relevant for understanding consumer behavior. Conspicuous consumption is anything but a frivolous behavior. In fact, it appears to be linked to theoretically important individual differences in reproductive life history. 
Given the ubiquity of conspicuous consumption across history and human cultures, it may be useful to examine the motivations for conspicuous consumption from an evolutionary perspective. So, why do people spend a lot of money on products that are extremely overpriced? This does not make sense. The costs seem much higher than the benefits. And yet we see it all around us. We set out to more fully examine the hypothesis that conspicuous consumption serves as a mating relevant signal. Drawing on the theories of sexual selection from Darwin, parental investment from Trivers, and strategic pluralism from Gangstad and Simpson, we investigated the precise nature of this system by examining both the display, that's to say the communication, and the perception, that's to say the interpretation, sites of conspicuous consumption. By ascertaining which people produce such displays and which people do not, and identifying contexts that are likely to evoke such displays, we provide insight into the communicative functions of conspicuous consumption. By starting with the theoretically crucial question of how men are and are not like peacocks, we examined which men, in which context, would be likely to produce showy consumption displays. We then built on these display-oriented findings by measuring how observers perceive such signals. In the first study, they examined how the activation of mating motives influenced, influences unrestricted versus restricted men's and women's conspicuous consumption desires. Mating motives were elicited using an established priming method, whereby people viewed photogra photographs of attractive and available members of the opposite sex. After priming of a mating or a control, neutral motive, participants allocated a $2,000 budget across several categories of consumer products, ranging from low to high conspicuousness. So results are low investment males spend more conspicuously when primed with mating stimuli than if in a control condition. This finding confirms that men who are interested in short-term mating will be motivated to conspicuously consume, particularly when mating opportunities are salient. Conclusion: Seeing photos of attractive women led these men to allocate more money to conspicuous products. In study 2, mating motives were elicited by having participants read a short romantic story. Participants then indicated their desire to purchase a product, a wallet, that would be perceived by others as being either status high status or low status. So results of this study are that low investment males had higher intentions to purchase the conspicuous products when primed with mating stimuli than if in the control condition. The mating prime has essentially no effect on the conspicuous purchase intentions of high investment males. And the mating prime did not influence spending on a low status wallet for men.
regardless of their intended mating investment. Conclusion Reading a romantic story led this man to desire an apparently high status, but not low status, product. Study 3 examined conspicuous consumption tendencies after either a low investment, short-term mating motive or a high investment, long-term mating motive was activated. Short-term mating motive is associated with low investment and uncommitted romantic flings, as long-term mating motive is associated with a high investment committed relationship. They primed the short-term and long-term mating motives by having participants read one of the two types of short stories, short-term and long-term, that were similar in length and style. After the motive manipulation, participants indicated how much money they would spend on conspicuous products that in pilot testing were appealing to men and to women. So results are that lower investment males had higher intentions to spend conspicuously when primed with short-term mating stimuli than if in a control condition. The short-term mating prime did not increase the conspicuous purchase intentions of high investment males. Lower investment males did not report higher intentions to conspicuously consume when primed with long-term mating stimuli versus when in the control condition. And the long-term mating prime did not increase the conspicuous purchase intentions of high investment males. Study 4 investigated observers' reactions to conspicuous consumers. Men and women were asked to indicate the desirability of an opposite-sex individual who had recently purchased either a conspicuous or a non-conspicuous car. Results A conspicuous car enhanced a man's desirability to women for a potential short-term relationship. In sum, a conspicuous car enhanced the desirability of the male target as a short-term relationship partner, but did not enhance his desirability as a long-term partner. And conspicuous consumption was unrelated to the female target's desirability for either relationship. Women perceived the man with the Porsche as opposed to the Honda as significantly more interested in short-term, uncommitted sexual relationships. Men perceived the woman with the Porsche as opposed to Honda as significantly more interested in short-term relationships.
The main findings of this research are Men who purchase luxury goods are perceived as more attractive, as specifically as short-term, but not as long-term partners. This final finding is crucial to our hypothesis that conspicuous consumption functions as a mating display. The findings from four studies indicate that conspicuous consumption functions as part of the mating signaling system. So this might be the underlying construct explaining the difference in consumption behavior between young single men at a party and a dad spending time with his family. There are two implications for this research, uh, of this research. One of the limitations is that the current research investigates just one way that conspicuous displays involving spending may be a path to enhance reproductive success. Another possible limitation is the participant samples in the present studies. They were drawn from undergraduate student populations in the United States. One potential limitation of student samples is the generalizability of the results. This was the summary of the article. Thank you for your attention and goodbye.